Hello, friends. This is Darren Hayes of PigskinDispatch.com. Before we take you to your favorite Sports History Network show, just want to tell you a little bit about some merch that you can pick up that represents your favorite SHN podcast. So far, there's t-shirts, coffee mugs, and even books from some of the authors that do podcasts right here on SHN. Who could buy something better than that than have the history right from the, the gentleman that you hear talking about it? But we also are adding things each and every day. And where's that store, may you ask? Well, it's at SportsHistoryNetwork.com. Up at the top, there is the SHN. HN merch button. Click on that. It'll take you right to the store and you can be representing your favorite podcast and show the world that, hey, on the swag that I'm using, it's the headquarters of sports yesteryear, Sports History Network, and my favorite podcaster, the Sports History Network store. Shop there today. You're in the right place for a great gridiron story. Our continuing research and study of football history has landed us in the Big Apple for a look at a very interesting story of a pro football franchise from over 100 years ago named the Staten Island Stapletons. We have their story and their origins coming up in just a moment. This is the Pigskin Daily History Dispatch, a podcast that covers the anniversaries of American football events throughout history on a day-to-day basis. Your host, Darren Hayes, is podcasting from America's North Shore to bring you the memories of the gridiron one day at a time. So as we come out of the tunnel of the Sports History Network, let's take the field and go no huddle through the portal of positive gridiron history with pigskindispatch.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of PigskinDispatch.com. Welcome once again to the Pig Pen, your portal to positive football history. And welcome to another journey back in time into one of football's great histories and great teams of yesteryear. And we're going to talk about the Staten Island Stapletons, their origin story, and what happened with that, that franchise uh, through their ro- route through football history. But before we do, let's make sure that you're aware of our daily newsletter comes out each and every day, 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, approximately. And uh, we have some great things that happen on there. We tell you everything that's happening here on Pigskin Dispatch, everything with the podcast that you're listening to right now, and Jersey Dispatch in a Sports Jersey Dispatch podcast as well. Also, Orville Mulligan Sports Writer, everything is coming out with that, and many items from the sportshistorynetwork.com which, uh, you know, you have a lot of different things that are happening and you have a lot of information that you get each and every morning on sports history of all types. And uh, we hope you enjoy that. Really easy to sign up for. Just go to the show notes of this very podcast. Go to pigskindispatch.com or jerseydispatch.com up at the top. Become a subscriber. Now, before the NFL existed, and even after that, there was a squad of fellas who loved to play football and they called themselves the Staten Island Stapleton. Interesting name. It's got an interesting story. According to a very well done article in the PFRA's Coffin Corner in 1985 by Joe Hogorian that titled the Staten Island Stapletons, the team first took the field in 1915. The Gridiron 11 was the brainchild of a man named Dan Blaine, also known as Stapleton for short by his peers and a group of his compadres who just love playing the game of football together. Headquartered on Staten Island, of course, they had many other nearby teams to play but within the New York City boroughs. The five boroughs had a, you know, a great amount of teams of guys that wanted to play football back in that era. They even figured out a way to make a couple of bucks playing the game they loved. Reportedly, about $10 a man each for playing the game uh, in a semi-pro status at the time. Now, Blaine was a top-notch halfback, born in 1891. And per, per the militaryhistory.fandom.com website, Blaine played on the Stapes from 1915 through the 1924 season, interrupted only in 1918 when he suspended his own play due to serving in the U.S. Armed Forces during World War I. Upon returning home from the war, Mr. Blaine took over the sole ownership of the Stapleton team. The Stapes had won several local area championships, and alas, at the age of 33, after the May 24 season, Blaine had to retire from playing, but this allowed him to focus more on the team's running and business side 
rather than running with the ball on the field. Now, Blaine was a successful businessman outside of football as well. He owned several local restaurants that did very well financially, making Blaine a wealthy man. Allegedly, and rumored, some of these profits were from the eateries he owned being speakeasies during the Prohibition era. Now, there were rumors of Blaine being a bootlegger as well, transporting illegal booze to his and other establishments that uh, were serving the illicit drinks of patrons uh, during that illegal time to have alcohol. Now, a couple of seasons later, after a devastating 33 to nothing blanking at the hands of the Newark Bears, a rival team, Blaine heard something from the victorious Newark players that set his team in a new direction. The Bears players had not been paid in weeks, and the talented bunch was disgruntled. You know, after all, they just beat the St- Staten Island Staple that's 33 to nothing. Well, this Newark organization was in deep financial trouble. So Blaine was patient. He waited a little bit. They ended up going belly up, and Blaine swooped in and hired most of the Bears roster to play for the Stapes. This infusion of talent took the Stapletons to a whole new level of play. One of these former Newark players, whose name was Doug Wyckoff, a talented rookie halfback that formerly played with Georgia Tech. Now, Wyckoff would become the passing leader for the franchise of the Stapletons and eventually their coach. We'll get to that in a moment. While the Stapletons ended up winning the Metropolitan Area Gridiron title over all the other independent teams, and they were the talk of the town. That was the case until a guy by the name of Tim Mara established his New York Giants franchise, which overshadowed the state successes. In 1927, Wyckoff defected to the Giants, helping them win the National Football League title. Mara's G-men blanked Blaine's 11 twice that season in head-to-head non-league games by the score of 19 to nothing and 18 to nothing. This really put a thorn in the side of Dan Blaine's progress of being the team of New York's boroughs that people wanted to see. You know, this was a big time with Tim Morrow backed with some some good money and some good leadership uh, with some of the people that were working with him. And the Staten Island did have a bright moment though in 1927 when they knocked off Ernie Nevers and the Duluth Eskimos, another NFL team, by the score of seven to six brought him a little bit of pleasure and a little bit of notoriety. Well, thus a rivalry with the New York Giants arose with this new competitive fervor. But Dan somehow learned Wyckoff back off of the Giants roster and onto the Stapes for 1928. He also landed some promising recruits from local colleges like New York University. The Staple team went 10-1-1 in 1928 as an independent, slingshot them to bigger and better things. And in 1929, the Staten Island Stapletons became an NFL franchise officially, replacing the New York Yankees franchise that went under. The Stapes were in the National Football League for four seasons, 1929 to 1932. And according to the Pro Football Reference, they ended up sporting a respectable 14-22-9 and nine overall record in the league. Well, the Great Depression had hurt attendance for Stapleton games and the rest of the NFL and financially became a tad too much for Blaine and company to handle in 1932. But before the 1933 season, which saw for the first time in years, new franchises entering into the NFL fray as Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and Cincinnati all entered into the National Football League. Dan Blaine asked the NFL brass if he could suspend operations for just a season, and this was granted. But the Staten Island Stapletons never did recover and re-enter into the National Football League. So there you have it. There is the history and the origin of the Staten Island Stapletons. Not a big success in the National Football League, but a 10-1-1 record the year prior as an independent and beating Ernie Nevers and the Duluth Eskimos. That's saying something because that was a pretty good National Football League team. And... uh, but there is a part of history, uh, not only for the, the boroughs of New York uh, and the East Coast, but for all of football that uh, just uh, showed how great these, these men were and their desire to play football. They lasted through a world, world war, uh, went through some 
circuits of being amateur and semi-pro and became professional football players at the highest level uh, in their era. So there's something to say about that. And we hope you enjoyed this little bit of football history. And we hope you'll join us next time when we talk about another great piece of American football history that I'm sure you'll love to share with those that you know. So let people know about us. Uh, we're on every single podcast aggregate you can think of. Spotify, the, the Amazon, uh, Audacity, uh, the Google Podcast, Apple Podcasts, and many others. Uh, including Stitcher and, and some of those other ones that uh, we think you really have a great time and easy time finding us. We are the Pigskin Dispatch, and we are here to bring you some great football history. Until next time, everybody, have a great, great iron day. That's all the football history we have today, folks. Join us back tomorrow for more of your football history. We invite you to check out our website, pigskindispatch.com, not only to see the daily football history, but to experience positive football with our many articles on the good people of the game, as well as our own football comic strip, Cleet Marks Comics. Pigskindispatch.com is also on social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all of your positive football news and history. Special thanks to the talents of Mike and Gene Monroe, as well as Jason Neff for letting us use their music during our podcast. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And I hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the Sports History Network and were able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network back in 2020 with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history, but as far as I'm concerned... We're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment, you know, that can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports yesteryear, starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, or who knows, maybe even writing an article for us over on the website, seriously, all you got to do is reach out to us on the contact page over at Sports historynetwork.com. You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you got to do, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.